Hello everyone, my name is George Diaz, president and founder of Larry Jacob Internet Marketing and an Infusionsoft certified consultant. Uh, I'm here with another episode of Defining Infusionsoft Success and I'm lucky enough today to have Steve Woody with me. Um, I'm in New York visiting, so you see my background's a little different from what you're used to and I'm actually a little bit more casual because I did go out for a run. Uh, but I'm here with Steve Woody, he's from the UK, so we're spanning the continents here. How are you, Steve? Hey, George, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm well. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, good, good. Now, uh, Steve's been on the program. He was on the program about a year back, and um, I've been watching what he's been writing, and he's talking about user experiences, customer experiences. Uh, he shared with me earlier that he is a web developer who no longer builds websites, which is kind of helps you position what he's about. Um, why don't you share with people uh, a little bit about what you've been doing lately, really focused on um, you know, the customer journey within your clients and even with yourself. Yeah, I mean, definitely. It's, um, I, I get so many people, I mean, when, when people come to me, the normal things they'll say will be one of two things. It'll either be, I need a website, and there'll be that generic word, website. And they, 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 they don't know what it entails. It's just, it's a website, right? But they don't know that they're going to need a designer, a developer, a strategist, a therapist. I mean, there's so many things that come in right. with that that word and so I started looking at how can I educate people better to understand what's needed without overwhelming them with all the things that go with it and then on the other side of it people also come to me and they say I need to promote myself or I need to I should be running ads what should I be doing and I, I normally the first thing I say to people when they say I should be running ads is no you shouldn't because people will often look at where should I put my money should I do Facebook ads Google ads and I'm right, like, right. Well, where are you gonna send them and are they converting yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it kind of got me looking at the, where people are looking and what questions they're asking is not necessarily, like what people are asking isn't what they need. They right. just don't know what questions to ask. Yeah, and then let me... And let it me, kind of drove me to the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because we, yeah, no, we are web developers and we actually build a lot of membership sites. And, and I, I like to explain what we do to people as, now, we're in the U.S., so I'm talking baseball. Uh, I guess you guys have your cricket games, which are similar, which is you have someone catching the ball, you have someone pitching the ball. Um, the website is the catching part of it, and I always like to tell people if the catcher can't catch, don't pitch anything at it, because you're wasting your time. Exactly, and and not only that, you can spend a lot of money, Facebook ads, Google ads, organic, whatever, um, sending traffic somewhere that doesn't convert. Um, so you really want to make sure that that you know that catcher can catch, can convert. Um, and, and let me tell you, once well, make you make sure there's a catcher there, yeah, there's, make sure he can catch. Right, and yeah. if and if it can yeah, catch, because because yeah. if if I had a customer that could come up and say, look, if I can get a thousand people to come to this page and I could get five of them to buy, well, now you have numbers to work with, um, and then yep. maybe because of the you know the numbers and you got to know your numbers, they'll come up and say, hey, I'll spend tons of money sending traffic to this page because I know it'll convert at this rate, and you know your numbers. But you're, you know, what you're talking about, and I'm just trying to frame it, is how do you get that relationship set up so you know your numbers, and then you, you can take take it this, forward. This is it, and this is and this is kind of why I started asking the question because I'm always looking at how can I improve what I do. You know, I don't, I'm not just a website developer. I don't just want to be a website developer. I'm a people person. I like to be with people, and so I've spent. A lot of money, a lot of money on my own personal education in the last 12 months. I've done two specific courses, they've cost me over five figures to do them, and the outcome was just to have a better understanding of what I do in my business. Mm -hmm. And one of the courses that I did, I got certified as a, a CCM, which is a coach, consultant, mentor, and it allowed me to, rather than going into a business and looking at it here, at a website level, when people say I need a website, I'd go in here. I've actually managed to take myself out and come in here and say, well, hold on, before we build the website for the business, let's have a look at the business. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time when people come to me and they say I need a website, they don't need a website. They, first of all, they need to sort their business out. And yeah. I don't want to waste people's time and money or my time and, and people's energy on building a website that's not going to serve them. And I see it all the time. Well, it is so easy to and, get a theme. Yeah, and to even get and technical. To get a and get something out there. Yeah, that doesn't work. No, right. And, and the question I, I often, in, in when I'm talking to people about their site, is how long is it going to take to build this? And, and I've had sites that we've lifted up, pretty complex ones, in two, three weeks. You know, 
Um, oh, yeah. Technically, it can be oh, done. I mean, I, one of my, one of my... I won't say one of my best sites, but a site that I built, I did it in two hours in a car right. on the way home from an event. Right. I so, spoke to the person at the event. They were launching a single. Uh, they were launching a, an album. Or a, yeah. a, a, it was a charity single, and they had no website to promote it, so we built it, and it's still going today. It's yeah. fantastic. Well, the thing is, though, customer getting us content can sometimes – I mean, exactly. I, I've got a customer right now that's been – it, it's been six but, months, yeah. and we're still waiting for them to give us the content. And well, it's all the different types of content. Yeah. Well, and the, the delay is around what you're talking about because they're really mm. not ready for me because they don't have the front matter done. But as well as that, I think like when you talk about content and it's a really, really interesting um, journey that I've been on with my own content that's allowed me to look at this because what I do and what I say are not always the same thing. And I, I, I admit that, you know, I'm on a journey as, as much as everyone else. Sure, is. sure. But what I found is that there's there's your content that you put on your um, on your business, like on the front end facing your business that people see, your websites, your brochures, your material, mm -hmm. things like that. There's the back end content that goes into things like your autoresponders, your nurture sequences, your campaigns, even your support systems. They all need content. Right. You know, your canned messages, anything like that. And then there's your marketing content, your promotional content, the content mm -hmm. that you're going to put out to attract people. So there's the content that's going to bring people to read your content. Right, <laughs> right, like, right. There's, but, and, and so what I found in looking at that, because this is similar to how people get distracted with the word website and they don't look at the other aspects, the same thing happens with content. And I don't think it's as much as people getting stuck not knowing what to write in the wrong content. It's they don't know who they're writing it to. And so this is why it's all about the customer journey because people don't realize who they're marketing and who they're targeting. And if I've learned one thing in business, and if, if, if you go away from listening to this interview with just one bit of advice, this would be it. There is something worse than having no customers. And that is having the wrong customers. <laughs> That's interesting. If you put the wrong message out there, you're going to attract the wrong people, and it's going to cost you time, energy, and money to, re to, to resolve that. And it could even damage or destroy your reputation or your brand or even your business. And I've seen it happen. Yeah. Yeah, so it'll be people you have that... To have the right people. And to get the right people, you need the right message. And it happened to me this morning. My wife, who is an English teacher, thank God for me because <laughs> my English isn't the best, she rewrote my about page. And there was a phrase that she put on my about page. And we were in a spa this morning and we, we were driving back. And I, I had an email from someone who basically turned around to me and said, um, I really resonate with what you've written here. I'm in the same position. Can we talk? Now, that would not have happened had I not have had that content in place sure, sure. To, to build that, that rapport, that relationship. And as it happens, they're a fantastic, like I've looked into them, they're a fantastic person. They've got a great business. So I'm attracting the right people because I have the right message out there. Yeah, that's key. And so I think that that's one of the things that people need to do. They need, who do you want to attract? What content can you create? to attract that person and then what systems can you put in place to, to funnel that person through into a, you know, like for example, the person I spoke to, I got them to book a discovery session. So they go through, there's some questions, there's some things for them to do mm -hmm. so I can pre-vet and filter them before I even have a conversation with them. Yeah, no, and, and you know, it's interesting. I, I now get the majority of my customers either through other partners uh, you know, folks like you, the Membarium guys, different different places. You know, I'm listed as a uh, implementation partner on different sites because I'm looking for experienced businesses as opposed to startups who either already have a lot of content, they're coming from another system. You know, we're on Kajabi, let's say, and they need to move it over to yeah. another system. So I used to do a lot of marketing face-to-face -face in Miami where I live. I'm very involved in our Chamber of Commerce, uh, Business Networking International, BMI, and um, those are not the right people because, first of all, they don't understand what I do, and I was spending a lot of time climbing uphill educating them as opposed to putting myself in front of people that are needing what I need badly. Um, and it's totally – now that I know who those people are, I mean, I know I have a target that's very, very clear – and the dialogue, the conversation, is it, it's easy at that point, where before it was like, why are these sales cycles so long? Why can't people get back to me? And it's because I had miss, I was missing my target, or, or I, I was aiming at the wrong target. And I think, I think that's, it comes down to awareness. I think at the end of the day, this is and when I used to tell people I was a website developer and I'm not anymore, it's because I like to 
I like to make people aware. You know, I like to give people a, a, an overview, a bigger picture. And so it's more about the strategy side of things. And I mean, we, we connected a year ago because of a plugin that, um, that I'd, I'd, I'd helped to, to build. Right, I'd, right. I'd worked on the strategy side of that because I, I was looking, and, and it's interesting, this is how the journey progressed because I was looking for a developer. Because I, I was developing and I wanted to step out of that and I still needed to have someone to fulfill that role. So I started looking around some of the well-known outsourcing websites um, to find somebody and this guy had just set up a profile. I think I was his first client on there. And I probably think I was his last as well because I, I realized how good he was. He was a rare gem. And yeah. I don't think he realized I'd spent two years kissing frogs trying to find a good developer. Right, right. And when I found him, I was like, you're mine. <laughs> and so I snatched him up and we took, him, we took on this project. And we actually built because I use Infusionsoft. I use Active Campaign as well, but I, I specifically uh, for my business. And I don't even know if it, it, it's around the hundreds. If not hundreds, it's, it's over 50. It's between 50 and 100 clients at the moment that I've got. That mm -hmm. I've set up on Infusionsoft, and I, I'm not an Infusionsoft consultant. That's not what I do. It's just I recommend it because it right. works. It works. And so, I've had a lot of experience in people who have got normally WordPress websites, Infusionsoft on the back end, and there's no good system to sort of connect them together. We looked at iMember. Like Memberium wasn't out at the time. We looked at iMember. Uh, we looked at Mem um, Customer Hub. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked at Wisp. We looked at all these different things that were available. And what we realised is there was no good solution. Like anything that was built was built by a network marketer or by a business owner, uh, maybe by a developer, but it didn't have the whole package. And I just wanted something that was really simple, very lightweight, very fly, something that just worked. Mm -hmm. And so we set about originally when I hired um, when I hired Jack, I only hired him so that he could connect. Um, a membership plugin on WordPress to Infusionsoft so they could talk to each other. Right. And that has since grown into its own um, product, which is WP Fusion, which I know right. that that's how we met. And from there, what we've done is we've we've constantly built and, and, and sort of I, I don't I'm not involved anymore. I mean I'm still involved with Jack, we still communicate, I still I work on a project, but it's now it's his, he runs it, right. it's his thing. And it's just been a pleasure to watch it grow really. And what it allows and it's just one of those examples of when you know your target audience. Like there were so many people who were frustrated with WordPress and Infusionsoft and without right. the whole way this is. And so we would, who do we target? Who, who do we market at? Do we go for business owners? Do we go for, and so you, you need to know that. And this is actually where we drop the ball. And I, and I, I was talking about this before the call mm -hmm. where um, Memberium launched about the same time as us. Mm -hmm. And I know David, I met him over in, uh, when we went to uh, Trapping Conversion. And I have to say, I t totally admire. I love Membium, brilliant product. I love David, brilliant, pro uh, brilliant guy. Their marketing was on point. Yeah. Ours wasn't. We, I did, we didn't identify our target audience properly. Like we built this to fix a solution, a problem that I had. Right, right, right. It was an internal clients. solution. It was never intended, but when people started getting their hands on it, they were like, "We, we need this." And it, it basically strips out the need for membership software because it works on tagging and it strips out the need for customer hub. And it syncs WordPress and Infusionsoft together. And not only on one site, I mean, my wife has three websites. There's a sales pet site, there's a membership site, and there's a teacher site. And all three of them, when you sign, when you sign up on one, it actually connects you to all three. So you're automatically right. logged in on all of them. Sure, sure. And the data synced between all of them. So it's, it's really beautiful in that sense. Mm -hmm. But it was never meant to be a membership plugin. It just kind of fulfilled so we, that. It filled, it so, fulfilled yeah, that feature. And so, we, and so it's really interesting that you talk about content because, and when we talk about the customer avatar, and when we talk about who we're marketing towards, because we didn't nail that down. When you look at Memberium, they're everywhere. They're brilliant. They're, they're they're just out there. When you look at WP Fusion, it's not. I'm not going to say it's a better or worse product. It's a different yeah, yeah. product. They're both fantastic. But it just shows you on the level of marketing when you nail down your content and your target audience and your customer avatar, and when you don't, you, you see the difference. Yeah. So, so if I'm out here and, and I'm a, a business owner, and I think I'm missing my target or I'm not connected with my target, what what do you recommend? That's a great question. Great question. The first thing that I recommend at any point, at anyone, if if you've got a bit of time uh, after you've watched this ideally because it's the perfect time to do it take a step back because we get so caught up it's so easy to say oh you know I need it so when someone external comes in it's so easy for them to say oh just do this 
because they're not they don't see it they're not in front of it like like we are so the thing that I would say is to disassociate yourself um, from yourself and, and I say that in a way that as a developer I may say PHP CSS HTML and use these like this jargon and these words that I use mm -hmm. but a business owner doesn't understand that and I don't need to or want to no no I agree and so we often get sort of in, in front of us it's so easy to, to get distracted by what we do no right and you're so and, and, and I like to say you're contaminated because you know it too well yeah, yeah, you, and, and sometimes, this is the other problem that I have, is I'm like, oh, it's, it's so easy to set that up. Right. But it's easy for me. It's easy for me because I do it every day and I know right. it inside out. It's not easy for someone else who hasn't well, had that experience. No, right, and, and part of the problem is that, you know, and you said, you said it just now, what we do is really easy for us, mm. which means we take it for granted and we don't see Absolutely. the value that that is to our ideal avatar. That's my biggest problem. Yeah. I, I look at all of this and I'm like, it's easy for me. I, I, I really struggle at times to justify my hourly rate. Like when people say to me, oh, you know, because I've started doing coaching now with people. Sure. People are saying, oh, what's your hourly rate? And I tell them and they're like, and then I'm like trying to justify it. And now the way that I actually figured this out is because I don't need to justify my hourly rate. I know how much money I can earn in my own business. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not working on my business, if I'm working on someone else's, what am I going to be losing? Right, like, right. What is that time if I invested it in myself? But it's, it, I, I, and I share that because I struggle with it. Sure, I sure. struggle with it because I struggle to see the value that I'm giving to people. Other people see it. Other people shout about me. That's how I get all my, all my business. Right, because right. people are telling me how good I am. I, the only reason I know how good I am is because other people tell me. It's not because of how good I, t I tell people I am. Right which is what I see a lot with people that speak on stage who tell people that for positioning. And, and yeah. so there's a, a thing. But what I would say in terms to answer your question is that if you can take a step back, if you can step out of your mind and out of your emotions and put yourself in the mind and the emotions of the person who you want to attract, go through your systems, go through your process, go through your content. But if you've got a product, buy it. Buy it as the customer. How easy is it to find you? How easy is it to navigate the website? How easy is it to check out? How looked after are you after you've checked out? Right. You know, are there anything that pops up that makes you think, uh, I'm not, I'll give you an example. It was a Facebook ad that popped up the other day. And this guy said, um, amazing new technology that's blowing away the industry. And it's, you know, it's, and, and it was so hyped up that I didn't buy it. Yeah. Purely because of the hype. If he had just said, the benefits and features of what this was and said it in a normal way, then I would have, it was like $10. It was nothing. Right, right. I mean, I, I can afford to take a risk on that. But the reason I didn't buy it is because I thought this is hype, this is internet marketing 101, and yeah. as soon as another project comes along, he's going to leave this one and then I'm going to have no support. Right, right. That was my mind. So you need to understand how you're, how you're marketing yourself and who you're marketing to. Yeah. Because you know, that works for a certain audience. Right, right, right. But not for another audience. So the biggest thing you need to do in, in your content, and this is like, if I can drive this point home, like this is the biggest thing. You need to segment. You need to, you need to diversify your audience in the sense that so many people are attracted to the idea of building a database and building a list. And I think that that is probably the most important thing that you can do in business is build a list. However, I put as many, I have a big net and I catch as many people as I can it sounds horrible when I say it like that, but, yeah, yeah. I, but I have a really big net to catch as many people as I can. And once they're in that net, my, my, the first thing that I do is I take them back out again. Yeah, so you yeah. go into a generic, and then is this right for you? No, then, then go. I don't, I don't want you if I'm not right for you. And I don't want right. to waste your time. I don't want to waste my time. If it's not right for you, that's fine. I want to know that. Yeah. If it is right for you, great. What do you need? You yeah. know, with my business, I, I deal with plan, build, and promote your website. I'm not going to tell people how to promote their website if they haven't planned it or built it yet. Yeah. And then so you and, need to start and, driving that content down. Yeah. And then, you know, like I, I used the word contaminated before where you, you, you're so yeah. close to it, you can't see it. That's where having someone like you or, you know, someone similar that's a coach that can be that mirror, you know, yeah. talking back to you and saying, this is what I'm hearing. 
because again, we're so close to it. Sometimes it's it's just we're oblivious to the way we either come across or the way we're being seen by others. Absolutely, hundred percent. I had this on, had a conversation this morning. A client of mine turned around and said, "I want to do Facebook ads," and I just went back. No, you don't, because you're not ready. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's like sometimes people. The thing is, it's I don't tell people what they want to hear. That's not my job. Yeah. I tell people what they need to hear, and sometimes that is not what they want to hear. Yeah. And that's a hard conversation to have. Yeah. Well, but I'm not here to be right. anyone's friend. You know, I'm here for you to get an outcome and for you to get what you need. And the only way you can do that sometimes is to have a, a solid sounding board. Yeah. No, and that's. I, I, I think that most people who start out in business don't have that. And I'm not saying that's me. It doesn't need to be me. It yeah. can be, you know, my wife is my sounding board. And, and we, we, we're always bouncing business ideas off of each other. And so it's, it's whatever that peer group is for you, mm -hmm. whoever that peer group is, you know, even if it's a small selection of customers, your target audience, your next door neighbor, whatever it is, but someone that you can talk to who's not involved in your world. Yeah, yeah. And, and even if it's a mastermind group, and that's why sometimes, you know, masterminds and hot seats are really valuable Absolutely. for that kind as of thing. As long as they're focused, as long as, because I find like with, with, with like sessions and masterminds and things like that, they're fantastic when they're focused, but when they get, um, you know, when one person's like controlling it or when, when it's like focused on one thing, I think it needs to like, one of the coaching things I did recently was four people, 20, uh, we did, um, it was actually, sorry, it was three people. It was meant to be 15 minutes. It was three people, 20 minutes each. And we work on a problem. So we have one, pro you bring one problem to the, one challenge to the table and we work on that. We mm -hmm. spend 20 minutes and we, we look at, we look at one solution or, or not, we look at one problem, all the solutions, an action plan. And then for the other 40 minutes or we, we deal with the other two people, but you stay on the call and you listen because you may learn things. Right, right. And so having that environment, it's it's great, really, really good because you sometimes uncover things that, you know, when I go to a restaurant and the waiter says, what do you like? Normally I say, surprise me. My wife always makes a joke about it, but for me, that's how I get to try new things. <laughs> it's, it's good to mix it up a bit, but also you need to know where you are, you know? I, I know what my favorite dish is. I know what I like. I know the food that I enjoy eating. But I like to mix it up now and again. But you have to come back to that base. I have to know what you know what's good for me and what what's and, and in terms of like that for your content, you have to know what's good for your audience. You have to know what works. Mix it up a little bit, mm. but you have to have the base to work from. Got Most it. people they don't put that foundation down. Good. Well, hey, um, Steve, this has been great talking to you about this. Um, if people want to reach out to you or you know get in contact with you, how do they find you? Uh, yeah, thank you. Great question, and I appreciate it. It's been it's been good. I, I sometimes get really passionate and waffle on this. So no, no. It's been, uh, there's it's been there's no lack of passion, Steve. We see it. <laughs> <laughs> I I run a company called Online Mastery, and I have a book which is called Plan Your Website. Um, there's a book, a workbook, an online course. I have what I what I tend to find is that I I was working with people, and there were people I was attracting who couldn't afford my services. It's just the reality of it. Right, right. So I wanted to create programs and products to help everyone wherever they are. So if people want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, of course that's an, that's an sure. option. If people don't have the budget for that, then there's a book where they can do it themselves and they can take themselves through the process. We do live workshops. We do a lot of other things as well. So onlinemastery.co.uk. Mm -hmm. I don't have the dot .com. We're still negotiating that one. No, the but, but we'll come up and we'll, we'll make sure that we publish those in case people didn't catch that. So that yeah, along I mean, with this article, to, I'm, I'm it'll be up there. To, to, to work something out with you where we, we offer something of value to your, your listeners. No, no, just so that I'll just um, come up and say to reach Steve, you know, get a hold of and I'll make sure to write that in case people didn't catch your URL. But um, Steve, thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate I'll, your time. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, do a, I'll do a deal for you if you want, where people, anyone that wants the book, they can have a copy. Just uh, I'll give you a coupon and you can give them to your audience. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Well, hey. Uh, it's, it's not, I don't, I don't, I'm not doing it for that reason. There's no pitch. There's no sell here. It's just if I can yeah. help people, then. Great. Great. Well, I appreciate that. So uh, thank you so much for uh, breaking out of your afternoon, my morning, and uh, we'll stay in touch. Take care. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.